Candace Kelly, and I'm a producer of Supernatural the Play with Kim Coles. Well, you know what? Throughout the years, I probably have maybe had a relaxer about two years out of my life. Most of the time, I have been natural, so it wasn't really a transition. I just always, when I got the relaxer, I was like, ooh, this isn't for me, and I just cut it all off. But back in the 80s, even, I was natural, making my own products, because there was nothing out there. So it wasn't necessarily a transition. I just, it's always been there. If my hair had done right by a, a relaxer, maybe, maybe I would have, you know, kept on going through the process. And my mom didn't have a relaxer, so I was, wasn't brought up to have a relaxer. So it was just something like, well, I went to college, I was like, I'm getting a relaxer. And I was like, that's not for me. So years ago, when Gilda had a bookstore, and I launched my natural hair care line at her store, and we decided to do a seminar in conjunction with it. We didn't know what would happen. The meetups weren't as big back then. We're talking six years ago. And we decided, all right, maybe we'll invite some women. Maybe they want to know how to do their hair naturally, standing room only. And, but at that time, we heard a lot of firsthand stories from women just about their hair journeys. So every time we had an event thereafter, we kept having them. I mean, by now, I've done maybe 50, 60 events because I have them every year, every month. I have a couple coming up. Um, in fact, the Natural Hair Bazaar that we're doing is, you know, an event that's around natural hair in conjunction with the play. But we always heard the most interesting stories about women and their journeys, how it impacted their families or social life or work, uh, health. So a lot of it really spoke to us because we're journalists by trade and we thought that there were some really good stories and we just decided let's cobble some of these together and see what happens woman who I, I would often sit down with women one-on-one -on -one if they wanted to give them some hair ideas and teach them how to use their product even if it wasn't my my own line just how to use their line better a lot of the times it's really working the product or working the tools whether it's diffuser or white tooth comb in any event there was a woman who I sat down with and she said and I said so tell me a little bit about yourself and your hair and she said well I came back to we were in Red Bank at the time she says I came back uh, down here to New Jersey to die. And I thought, oh, okay, I wonder where we're going with this. And she said that her doctor, maybe about a year before, had told her to cut the relaxer out of her hair, um, to obviously change her health. She had cancer. She was told by a doctor she had cancer to change her health patterns and eating and cut the relaxer out. Because, you know, you put the relaxer in your hair, you're putting it in all those pores, and it does go through the system. And she says, but then a miracle happened. You know, I cut my relaxer out and I got better and I'm free of cancer for now. And, but now I have this hair. So I thought, oh, that's very interesting. I mean, she only had the natural hair because her doctor told her it was a health choice. And I hear a lot of the health story issues. In fact, we have someone in the play who speaks to just that in terms of the health choice and the healthiness of just being natural as opposed to putting relaxer in your hair. My sister too. <clears throat> My sister also had an experience where she thought that every time she got a relaxer, she would feel sick. And she actually was. She, she turned over the box one day and said, you know, I just feel like it's making me sick. It, had so, it has, mostly relaxers have sodium chloride, or sodium something, which is salt, because she had high blood pressure. She was putting it in her hair, putting it, and it would go through the system, and then after a couple of days, it would flush, her, flush itself out. But for a couple of days, she just wasn't feeling well, and it was because of the relaxer itself. So she was she was correct for what was going on in her body. I know it's amazing. You really, I just thought, okay, maybe people want to come and talk about hair. I never thought that they would have stories that were so deep. Or you know, one woman said, you know, I was made. So... Now this actually, this is the most serious story, and, and it's one that I've heard two times. She said people made fun of me so badly when I was a child. That I wanted to take my life. She was serious. She said, I had gone on the bus, back going back home, and I was determined. She said they and she told me, you know, the whole backstory and whatnot. But that was the ultimate result as a result of her hair. Now she's fully natural and everybody's, you know, fine with it. And certainly she's fine and in love with herself now. But being a nine year old and the only one that didn't press her hair and being made fun of fun of every single day, every it just got to well, my hair was big, I mean, it was 1997, um, and I was told my hair was inappropriate for the workplace. Verbatim, inappropriate for the workplace. I was working at Court TV, it was 1997, and I really was out of place for what people were doing with their hair 
Let me see, 1997, 2007, 8, 9, 30. I mean, it was like 15, 16 years. So that is a long time. This whole natural hair thing and movement, even though I don't think it's movement, I mean, I don't think that a bunch of people are gonna go back to relaxers. I meet one every once in a while when it goes back, but not a lot. But it wasn't this whole push for natural hair. And even my friends would be like, hey, right hand, as they would look at my hair. But that's what my hair did. That's the only thing it did. It was pretty much the way it is right now. Honestly, like I was looking at the pictures, same hair. <laughs> and I have grown it out, and I, I did grow it out. It's the exact same thing. And they said, was, and I heard through the grapevine that people thought it was inappropriate for the workplace. A white woman thought so. But even my African American girlfriends who were there, they were like, mm. and now they're all natural. Uh, well, the storyline is set at a natural hair event. So pretty much mimics the events that I've done over the years, where I bring people together to talk about hair, and inevitably somebody gets up and wants to share their story. I was addicted to creamy crack, or I haven't talked to my mother because she thinks I can't meet a man because of my hair, or um, you know my mom wants me to change my hair because I'm just graduated from college and she doesn't think that I will get a job with my hair like this. So we really kind of fashioned it after the natural hair events that we do. So there's someone who leads, and that's Kim Coles, the one who goes to all these hair events, just like me, um, and Gilda too, and kind of cobbles together these women and say, here's a mic, what's your story? Or how do you want to do your hair differently? Come up, let's do a hair demonstration. So really this is about the the core of it is the story. I mean, we don't do hair demos or anything in the play, but the stories that we hear, that very much so mimics the events that we have. You have someone who's at the head, like me or, or Gilda, and women just giving their stories and building questions, and then also just sharing. And everybody shares. There have been times where women have taken off their wigs, you know, because, the, you know, women encourage them, like, it's okay, it's okay, take it off, take it off. And they're like, no, no, you know, they just don't want to let go. They've had the whip for so long, they just, and it's like, no, you are really with friends here. Like, no one knows your journey better than us black women here, so you must well take it off. You have anything to be embarrassed about, and they take it off. And it's, and it's, it's amazing that they take it off, and it's a comfortable, loving setting where they can do so and just start from scratch and be encouraged by women if they happen to want to wear their hair the way they want to. So that is the setting. It just mimics a real natural hair event. And it's seven women all together who tear, tell their hair stories. So we've got some woman, one woman from Jamaica. Um, we've got another woman who's biracial. Uh, we have another woman um, who's a lesbian. You know, and all of those. Like when I had my hair very, very short, again, so this is back in the mid-90s, people would think inevitably that I was a lesbian all the time because I, you know, that happens to be, perhaps for some, the perception of a lesbian. And so she tells the story uh, about that and how her hair kind of shaped the perceptions of people, which then shaped her own experiences because how she was received. Well, I have a lot of hair events, and once I invited Kim to come out to the New York Library, it was my first really big event. And by big, I mean more than 60 people. I didn't know what to expect. I just invited her to come and host these women because she had gone natural and she did a little stand-up comedy. A lot of it had to do with hair. A lot of it just had to do with her coming into herself and being comfortable with who she was in Hollywood as an actress as well as her hair. We had some vendors and some food. These women showed up. I mean, there were about three, 400 women. And after that, I invited her to another event. And then at about, you know, three events in, where you know, we really started kind of just chatting regularly, I mean, because you see somebody so much. The business, you know, I'm driving to the airport, we're talking about other things. So we came to the play, I thought, you know, maybe she'd be interested. I had a more than a working relationship with her, and so I gave her a script, and she told me she read it on the plane, and she said, sure, I'll do it. And we went from there. You know what? I, I, you know, now it's really, it's a business. I mean, doing the play and doing the hair events, for me now, happened to end up being a business just because people kept coming. I mean, I had an event in New York City, there were 4,000 women. So they wanted to come, learn about hair, and you know, I put these things together with a couple of other people, Janelle Stewart of Kinky Curly Coily Me, we often collaborate. 
um, as well as Kim, as well as wherever I might like to find a collaboration. And I've always thought about it in the business sense. Like when will it reach its plateau, like many other things, and what will happen? So, I, and I've had this conversation with my business partners, like, let's get on this train right now. So the play, while it's about hair, it's still a piece that happens to be about artistic expression. So I don't want to think about it in terms of, okay, oh my goodness, when is the natural hair movement going to end if it does? Even if it ends, I believe the play still has some viability. I really do. But in terms of just the natural hair thing itself, it's going to be a long time before it transitions out, so to speak, because there are too many people who we see in pop culture who are not natural, who are going to keep the younger generation, unless mothers and fathers do it, who are going to keep the younger generation in a relaxer kit. And then when they get to a certain age, then they transition out. Because, you know, your hair just isn't that strong to take the relaxers for that long. I was um, consulting with a woman the other day and she wanted to Skype because she wanted me to see her edges because she'd worn a wig for so long and you know, those clips, those edges when it gets there kind of takes out the hair. Um, I think that we're just going to see more of that unless something drastically changes in the world of pop culture. And I really mean, if Beyonce goes 